sir we are live on youtube with all your permission i am starting this session well, good evening everyone present here i am faraz from clarnet clarnet is very proud to be a part of this session as a digital partner clarnet is india's digital live cme and doctor generated learning platform with all of you i am presenting a short video on clarnet Thank you so much all doctors for watching the video and you all are requested to visit our website that is www.clarnet.com where you can watch lots of live sessions conducted by expert doctors across the globe and we have medwiki service which is medical wikipedia for doctors only that you can also read by taking not much time i would like to hand over this session to dr prashant karya sir sir over to you kindly proceed from here so on behalf of academy of pediatrics gujarat i Dr. Prashant Karya, the project coordinator of uh, eGurukul. Welcome, one and all. Today we are having an interesting case on case discussion on neurology, and uh, we are thankful for this eGurukul program to our project in charge, Dr. Yogesh Parikh, and convener, Dr. Balde Prajapati sir. Along with me, Dr. Nehal Patel is also the project co coordinator for the same. Uh, today, Dr. Devrath from Government Medical College Surat is going to present an interesting case of neonatal tetanus under the uh, guidance of Dr. Upendra Chaudhary, who is the assistant professor in Government Medical College Surat. And we do have an expert, Dr. Shwetal Bhatt, ma'am, with us. She is associate professor in pediatrics in Baroda Medical College. So we welcome one and all. And I request Devrath to start the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, esteemed faculties. Uh, I would like to present a case on neonatal tetanus, which is admitted in our NICU uh, under the guidance of uh, my assist assistant professor, Dr. Upendra Jadari. Uh, so I would like to begin with it. Uh, Deepak Shambhu Yadav, uh, born to a primary mother, full term at 38 weeks of gestation. Uh, baby was male child uh, with birth weight of... Uh, 1.3 kg uh, vaginal delivery belonging to lower socioeconomic strata and Yadav caste. It was born by home delivery. He was born uh, at home. Patient was admitted in the NICU at day of life 7 and came with complaints of lethargy for 2 days, inability to take feed for 2 days, fever since 2 days, uh, which is high grade and continuous, and tightening of all 4 limbs. Uh, initially, patient was brought in the casualty. Uh, suspected of hypoglycemia, um, but RBS checked it was normal. So patient was admitted in the NIC for further investigation and management. Uh, antenatal history. Yes, Devrat. Yes. Uh, Thirty-eight weaker, one point three kg. Uh, yes, ma'am. Actually, ma'am, there's a typing error. It was two point three kg. The baby was two point three kg. Okay. There's a typing error, I'm so, I'm so sorry for that. Yes, that is a major thing, no? If you say 38 weaker, 1.3 kg, the entire morbidity profile changes because the child a baby is? IUGR. Yes, IUG. Yeah. This baby was my, my, not IUGR. It was 2.3 kg, uh, just low birth weight. Okay, so what will be the, what, how will you define IUGR? Uh, Ma'am, uh, fetal growth restriction is defined as the decrease in the growth velocity of uh, uh, in the in intrauterine life of a baby or uh, basically the fetus not attaining the weight that it should attain by uh, uh, plotting, plotting it on the growth charts like uh, as expected as per the antenatal USGs and how it should be growing. It is not growing in the last few, last trimester or in the recent uh, the IUGR is only because of the last trimester uh, growth. Uh, no, ma'am, no, it, it can be seen in uh, uh, any trimester, like, but most commonly, uh, IUGR in uh, it can. It is a specific thing, no? That uh, it is not. It cannot be seen in any time. It could be a first trimester. Uh, 
आयुजियर और लास्ट ट्राइमेस्टर आयुजियर सिमेट्रिक आयुजियर और एसिमेट्रिक आयुजियर मैम द लास्ट ट्राइमेस्टर आयुजियर इज यूजुअली असिमेट्रिक आयुजियर बिकॉज़ देयर इज ब्रेन स्पेयरिंग इफेक्ट एंड द वाइटल ऑर्गन्स आर स्पेयर्ड सो हाउ विल यू हाउ विल यू डायग्नोज दैट इज देयर एनी सम पैरामीटर्स यू टेक इट टू नो व्हेदर इट इज अ सिमेट्रिक और एसिमेट्रिक मैम आफ्टर द बर्थ ऑफ द चाइल्ड पॉन्डरल इंडेक्स कैन बी चेकड इफ पॉन्डरल इंडेक्स इज मोर देन 2.5 then uh, it is a normal baby uh, if i uh, or it can be symmetrical like pondral index like for your colleagues if you want to explain then what is the pondral index uh, ma'am pondral index is uh, weight uh, of the baby in uh, grams divided by height square in centimeter height cube in centimeter okay so that's uh, a what Ma'am, that gives a idea about like how much the <clears throat> the weight is, the ratio of the weight and the length of the baby. If the length is normal uh, and only the weight has reduced, then it is there's a more likely chance of be, it being a asymmetric idea. So in that case, pondral index is less than two. What happens to the head circumference and brain? Ma'am, head circumference is pretty much normal in asymmetric idea. In symmetrical IOGR, you can encounter microcephaly as well. So when the insult happens at in first trimester, what what it is symmetric or asymmetric? Symmetrical. Okay. So in that uh, IOGR, uh, what are the other morbidities do you suspect? Uh, ma'am, there you uh, we can suspect uh, torch infections. Very good. Uh, Very good. Uh, apart from that, ma'am. there can be uh mm mam only other... only torch any genetic uh, causes oh uh, yes mam genetic causes as well like chromosomal abnormalities like uh, down syndrome edwards cutoff okay so the con- the morbidity like congenital anomalies are more with the first trimester first trimester yes. right? whereas in the last trimester insult when there is an asymmetric iugr which type of morbidity you come across you uh, say for this baby no what happened in casualty to this baby no no he, he was brought with complaints of fever and tightening of limbs in the casualty and was checked for hypoglycemia because okay. so what is more, with what morbidity is more common with asymmetric iugr Uh, ma'am, hypoglycemia is suspected. Hypocalcemia is also seen most. Uh, that triggered me to ask you, okay, you have not not mentioned about thirty eight week are appropriate for gestation age. Okay. The yes. word hypoglycemia triggered me because see, you have written thirty eight week are one point three kg. Ah, uh, oh, that yes. is major. So, yes, yeah, that is that. There you have to catch. You have to be very particular when you are presenting a case in your final viva. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. we are not going to ask you from out of the box it is in the history only we can pick up that yes the clue leads to a hypoglycemia okay yes. Yes. So, go ahead with the i am coming to the antenatal history uh, the mother was primi gravida 19 year old female uh, married since 2 years weight 46 kg height 155 cm bmi 19.1 Uh, unregistered pregnancy uh, no doses of iron and folic acid taken only one antenatal visit was done at a private clinic at 6 months of amenorrhea um, and in during that visit one dose of tt was taken uh, no history of hypertension diabetes mellitus vomiting fever uh, fever with rash or radiation exposure uh, hiv hepatitis b and vdr status what onwards how much doses of tetanus a person adult gets once there is a birth see this hmm. is a 19 years old female and yes. we have a uniform a universal immunization program since uh, birth starting universal immunization program it starts at birth since so from bcg it starts at birth but in india it was implemented if you have learned if you have read your park ma'am 1987 i'm if i'm not wrong 70s okay right so we have a universal programs from that And so this mother must have been exposed to tetanus vaccination from birth onwards. Mm, yes, for uh, yes. she should be ideally. Yes, she should be ideally. So from birth, if you count from the birth, how many doses of tetanus we give? Uh, ma'am, at six, uh, ten, and fourteen weeks of uh, birth, uh, we give uh, 
pentavalent now hmm. initially it was dpt uh, tetanus three doses primary immunization uh, then booster and then booster at uh, ma'am 18 to 24 months uh, we give for booster we give five years we give another booster and then at 10 and 16 years there is only dt yes yes so this mother must have been exposed to five doses of tetanus toxicide right and yes, still in government we have an antenatal tetanus toxicide dosing of uh two two doses ma'am one month apart i mean mother yes yes so uh, this mother must if you have gone into the detail of the mother you can uh, pick up whether she was pre- previously vaccinated or not yes okay. then uh uh natal history ma'am uh, patient was uh, born full term at 38 weeks of vaginal delivery vortex presentation uh patient was home delivered by an untrained person uh, and the patient was actually delivered by asha worker but the asha worker was not trained in uh, conducting deliveries she was just a local uh, management of supply chain of drugs and uh, registering females for uh, uh, institutional deliveries that was her job as per the history given by her uh, baby cried immediately after birth uh, where this patient belongs man this patient was uh, belonging to palsana i mean he was the patient was a resident of madhya pradesh but migrated the from migrated population. population yes yes yes, okay. yes. uh uh the cord of the uh, the umbilical cord uh, was tied using unsterilized thread and was cut with a fresh blade uh the the asha worker gave a history that she just brought the thread from a local market but uh, uh, the bl- blade which she used was a fresh blade like a uh, newly uh, not you, you the blade was not used previously anyway uh no history of meconium uh, stain lichen oligo or polyadromnias obstructed labor foul smelling lichen uh fetal distress or pph postpartum uh the child passed stool within 2 hours and urine on first day of life uh after that the child was normal for 5 days after day of life five the child started having symptoms of not taking feed normally then the child started having uh, increased stone in the his body the child started having high grade fever and on day of life seven the child was admitted in our nicu birth vaccination was not done uh the child was breastfed uh, up to that that moment uh and uh the child was given a prelactal feed before starting breastfeeding that was a significant postnatal history uh he was given a feed with honey after before How starting the affects the baby why the prelactal feeds are uh, not encouraged or it has been banned or we don't allow uh, we don't uh, we say no to the prelactal feeds why it is so significant history uh ma'am it has been seen that uh, children who are given prelactal feeds uh, are more prone to developing infections like nec uh and uh, uh like it is basically introduction of a foreign material in the gut which is uh, immature in flora and not able to digest okay uh, one is that the uh, the uh, the content the second mm-hmm. is that the way of giving how mm-hmm. they, give they give it with the the dirty cloth mm-hmm. if it is given, it can lead to infection okay yes. okay a uh, full term male child uh, vaginally delivered at home by untrained person with history of unregistered pregnancy with only one antenatal visit and one dose of tt taken cord tied using unsterile thread and prelactal feed given was admitted in nic on day of life 6 with complaints of lethargy inability, inability to take feeds fever and tightening of all four limbs since two days on the basis of uh, the history ma'am we uh, suspected uh, three to four uh, differentials in our uh, initial assessment uh, we suspected hypoglycemia hypocalcemia after that we suspected even meningitis and but after uh, proper examination we started suspecting neonatal tetanus the our initial uh, differential did not include tetanus because very rarely we have encountered neonatal tetanus in our tax spasms like that was the first time when we uh, suspected the child to be having tetanus 
and the csf was uh, we were not able to tap the server because there was the back spasm was so strong that uh, we were not able to so you uh, haven't uh, uh, able to insert the needle right yes ma'am okay still i am asking you if you have inserted a needle and there is a red color mm -hmm. red डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस फॉर यूनिटल टेटेनस do we have a participants devrat or we are just and uh, um, we have uh, one colleagues one of my colleague ma'am so even sura department is not joining uh, no i uh, we make sure when baroda department is presenting at least baroda uh, residents has to join so i think dr upendra then only it will be a good discussion uh, ma'am side is there one resident is there dr sahib so dr sahib would you like to answer the differential diagnosis no i have given a hint of hemorrhage Devrath, have you seen a patient of subarachnoid hemorrhage? Uh, no. With a hemorrhagic disease of newborn patient coming with spasm, convulsion, no, and subarachnoid. So there is, it is in the literature. It is not that all the cases are pre. You can see during your residency tenure, but when you are presenting a neonatal tetanus, one of the differential diagnoses is subarachnoid hemorrhage. Because see, again, this child must not have received vitamin K at birth. Mm, yes. Very much chances of a hemorrhagic disease of newborn, and subarachnoid hemorrhage can develop with the uh, present with this type of spasm. Pyogenic meningitis is one of the uh, differential diagnoses, and there are few other things you should think. You cannot stuck up. It is a neonatal tetanus, right? We need to treat it immediately. Mm. But a child who is three kg and then coming at seven days with two point five three kg. Is a major weight weight loss. Yes. Which electrolyte imbalance will give rise to spasm? Ma'am, uh, hyponatremia, uh, hypernatremia. Hypernatremia can be a thick skin, and you feel that there is a spasm, but it is not a spasm. It's a sclerema. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Thick skin is there, so you are not able to bend the limb, right? Could it bend? Then, which other condition? Ah, uh, ma'am, hypomagnesemia can also lead to spasm. No, we don't see with the uh, we see with the convulsion. We don't okay. see with the spasm. Spasm. You need to differentiate between spasm and the convulsion. Okay. This yes. was weight loss. No, I am really thinking. Ki, uh, could it be an IEM in born error of metabolism with convulsion? So spas is it a spasm or is it a convulsion? First, that you have to confirm. So <clears> how to <throat> differentiate between the spasm and the convulsion? Uh, ma'am. spasm and uh, there will be specific contraction of muscle or muscle group yes and <clears throat> seizures can most likely be generalized or focal but they will be associated with other disturbances also they will be seen simultaneously like autonomic disturbances it can be present with tetanus also yes and uh, ma'am uh, seizures will not be an exclusively a motor phenomenon uh, yes very good And, and it is a group of muscle yes there could be tonic clonic there would there could be tonic only yes uh, but there is associated conditions are there or it yes. could be a different presentation subtle seizures in newborn subtle seizures right but whereas spasm is a group of muscle yes right so what is the common presentation of neonatal tetanus uh ma'am the common presentation is pretty similar to the one that we came across uh, as per literature ma'am uh, it is usually uh, it is known as a seven day disease it is usually encountered on uh, in the after five to six days of birth uh, in the second week of life uh, 
uh, where baby there is incessant crying uh, inability to take feed fever uh, and then increased tone of the body and then ultimately spasmodic what is the presentation yeah you are right you are absolutely right classic presentation is uh, the disease of day 5 What is in period of presentation? Ma'am, the mostly it is seen in the second week of life, like uh, day of like seven But to fourteen days. Yes, they were mostly it is there. It is second week or first week. But period, like from which day of birth, I should suspect that this is a new infectiousness. Till what? Ma'am, after day present with spasm. on within 24 hours is it a neonatal tetanus no no ma'am it never What? presents in the first two days of life. yes it is never presented in first two days of life. Yes. it is 2 to 28 uh, 4 okay oh, 28 2 to 28 day. maximum frequency as you see it is at the day 6 or day 7, 7. right because see it is not a intra uterine infection Hmm. Yes. Is an extra uterine infection. Hmm. So, clost, which is the organism? Clostridium tetanus. Yes. So, it needs time to grow. It has been transferred by a uh, either a umbilical cord cutting is there, right? Most of the time, it is because of the umbilical cord infection, but it needs times to grow. So, it is two to twenty-eight day. Maximum at a six or seven day of life. Yes. Right. And what you say, inability inability to suck is hmm. one of the Uh, first finding, yes. and then comes because of sucking is not there. Hypoplasia means this lethargy is there. But classic spasm is. Uh, Ma'am, the trismus is the. Uh, Rise the sardonicus. Rise the sardonicus. Hey na, green yes. like face, and then the eyebrows are raised, and there hmm. is also sort of a posturing. Yes. It is a classic of. Uh, yes. Using the long jaw. Yes, ma'am. Descending yeah. type of spasm. Ah, uh, as soon as you start uh, keep up a spatula, the child will clinch the spatula. Baby will clinch. The spatula test is the most diagnostic test. No other test is there. Spatula mm. test has to be done. Okay. So this is the presentation of neonatal tetanus. But as your baby had a profound weight loss, mm. you need to think of other causes also, whether yes. it is convulsion. If it is a convulsion, then we need to think of the inborn error of metabolism. Mm -hmm. If it yes. is spasm, is it because of any electrolyte imbalance? Is it because of uh, severe dehydration? Yes. Right? Okay, we can go ahead. <clears throat> Examination. Uh, the child is currently under warmer care. uh back extended limbs uh straight uh, office to on on a posture present head circumference 35 cm length 47.5 and uh, weight is 2.3 ma'am uh anterior fontanel 2 cm by 2 cm ponderal index was 2.8 uh posterior fontanel only was admitting a tip of the index finger uh no evidence of overriding of sutures or cephalomatoma or capet succedinum uh hair scale, skull skin over the skull was normal what is the difference I, between capet and cephalomatoma uh ma'am the uh cephalomatoma does not cross the suture line uh, in the where, wherever it is seen ma'am it is uh, under the bone uh, subperiosteal the blood loss is subperiosteal in nature it is uh hence it is restricted by the suture lines whereas capet is uh, it is uh, edematous extravasation into the interstitial spaces of the skin over the skull and hence it is generalized okay this much only or um, anything else you want to add i'm uh, i'm uh, capet ma'am ma'am there will be like Suppose uh, this is a short note, so he will write this much. How will you counsel the mother? Ma'am, the capet will, uh, ma'am, uh, resolve on its own within like forty-two, forty-eight to seventy-two hours. But uh, so, sepha, it will just sepha. No, two to three days it starts resolve. Like it will start reducing in the the head circumference will start reducing. Whereas sepha lama tama will take quite some time to resolve. You uh, have to assure the mother, no, that when uh, chinta na karta. आ तो पेलू डिलिवरी वक्त 
પ્રેસ થયું હોય એટલે પાણી ભરાય સાત એક દિવસમાં જતું રહેશે કેપટ રાઈટ વોટ અબાઉટ ધેફેલોમેટોમાં ટ્રોમેટિક ઇન્જુરી ટ્રોમેટિક ડિલિવરી સોરી ટલી Hmm. Ma'am, is it jaundice like because of the yes. uh, so, of the blood? Hematoma, there is a collection of the blood. As soon as the blood uh, starts, uh, there is a hemolysis. The, there will be the physiological jaundice will be precipitated or exaggerated by the, the this hemolysis. Of the, hmm. the one is hemolysis. Second. Hmm. what is second any other danger thing danger means favorite your friends can help you yes, by stopping or your by uh, answering yes sir uh, okay anemia anemia less likely because see they believe a hemoglobin of a newborn is high at the time of birth હેમોફિલિયા So are we worried about the bleeding part of uh, hemophilia patient or we are worried about some other thing also? Anywhere in the body if there is a hematoma. Are hmm. you worried about only the bleeding part or anything else? Ma'am, it starts... Uh, if it generated RBCs or a pool of blood is present, what will happen? Uh, ma'am, it starts uh, eroding the underlying bone and there they... No, no, it don't start at all. ડિસ્ચાર્જિંગ પેશન્ટ વિથ કેફેલોમેટોમા બેન જો તમને આ ઓડો અને એ રડે તો દેટ મીન્સ ઇટ ઇઝ ટેન્ડર ટેન્ડરનેસ ઇઝ બીકોઝ ઓફ ઇન્ફેક્શન રાઈટ સો ઇમિડિયેટલી વી હેવ વી નીડ ટુ એસ્પિરેટ ઇફ ઇટ ઇઝ અ બસ યસ વી આર નોટ ડુઇંગ સોનોગ્રાફી રાઈટ નાઉ ઓન ડિસ્ચાર્જ બટ વી હેવ ટુ એક્સપ્લેન ટુ ધ મધર કે બેન આને આપણે તમે આને ઓડો અને રડે તો તરત જ બતાવાવજો અથવા તો તાવ ખૂબ વધી જાય ઇફ ધેર ઇઝ અ ફીવર ઇફ ફીવર ઇન્ક્રીઝીઝ ધેન ઇમિડિયેટલી કમ okay second is if the jaundice is increasing mm, then yes. you have to come back so these two things in cephalohematoma you have to remember okay next uh ma'am other uh, head head to foot examination also did not reveal any significant findings uh there was ma'am yellowish discoloration present tinge was present up to abdomen uh but since the patient had come after day of after 120 hours of life it was not fitting in the range for uh, it was coming under physiological jaundice it was not uh, pathological uh so there was differential diagnosis we missed uh ma'am this bilirubin uh, ectonic terrace yes 
see the child is presented with uh, severe uh, weight loss so yes. if we think that the child has not been fed properly and there was a severe dehydration in the severe dehydration acidosis and hypoxia will allow to cross the uh, blood brain barrier blood brain barrier right so even if the jaundice is not in the range of mm -hmm. exchange zone still the child has or sepsis the child has that the child may develop bilirubin induced encephalopathy encephalopathy bilirubin induced encephalopathy also we get same clinical picture mm hai -hmm. right? yes ma'am so this is also one of the differential diagnosis we cannot like directly jump on the neonatal tetanus for this patient yes ma'am right? okay next uh vitals uh, and the temperature of the patient was 102 degree fahrenheit heart rate was 180 regular in rhythm normal volume no radio radial or radio femoral delay respiratory rate was 55 uh, uh, breaths per minute abdominal thoracic type of respiration uh crt was less than 3 seconds uh, blood pressure 68 by 34 uh, recorded by nibp uh, monitor And SpO2 was 97-98 uh, percent pre and post ductal uh, in multi-parameter. So day thirty thirty-eight weeker day seven. Are you happy with the blood pressure? You have you seen the centile charts? Ah, uh, I recently read them. Actually, this is falling under hypotension a bit of like yeah. in thirty-eight weeks of uh, gestation. The mean BP is. a bit on the higher side it is around i have not seen the exact charting but the 50th centile is somewhere around 52 to 53 man don't go on your memory for the centile charts yes ma'am any other okay. pediatrics ask for the centile charts in your viva okay because okay. it is very crucial for us why why there is why the <clears throat> why i am concerned with your blood pressure why didn't i ask about your crt or spo2 or respiratory rate why i asked about the blood pressure mm i just uh, cross check with the charts no no you don't need to cross check forget it i am just asking ki why the blood pressure is important in neonatal tetanus uh ma'am overall in in tetanus man there is hypertension is seen uh, exactly tetanus. there is a hypertension because of autonomic okay Suppose a neonatal tetanus patient comes with hypotension. What is the clue? Uh, now the the patient can be dehydrated. Beta, dehydrated. Or, I'm since he was not taking feeds also. I uh, I thought can be possible. Okay, fine. One is a hypo volume. Then, but when there is an autonomic disturbance, is Devrath because of neonatal tetanus, it affects the ANS also. the dehydration component is overtaken by that so it could be neutralized but it won't be a hypovolemia mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so what else you are suspecting when a patient of neonatal tetanus arm spasm ma jatu hoy and your nibp is falling uh ma'am there can be hemorrhage ma'am hemorrhage uh, due to like spasm spasms can lead to which hemorrhage will lead to hypovolemia लिटरेचरिएटेडेशन because of autonomic nervous system disturbances but i have seen because we are the tertiary care center for all the um, drainage area like tribal areas of the uh, we are draining and where the vaccination coverage is poor we see that patient comes with severe sepsis associated with neonatal tetanus mm. and sepsis yes. shock is there so yes. when there is a shock in a neonatal tetanus most of the time we are septicemia and morbid mortality point increases yes okay so you are here the nibp 48 now simple thing i will teach you ki when the gestational age is 38 mm -hmm. the mean bp has to be 38 oh. till day 7 oh. 
Okay. Very simple. If I haven't seen a centile chart, if I don't have a centile chart, and if I am taking a round, okay, what is the mean BP? Mm -hmm. That I'll. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. that's very simple way. That doesn't mean that you don't have to see the centile chart. Yes. Ah, uh, you have to always see. So yes. if you are forty-eight mean BP, which is bit higher, little bit of higher side, not yes. of hypertension. Second thing, that blood pressure is the last sign of hypertension. Hmm. Ah, uh, soft, soft. Tachycardia. Uh, low volume pulse, yeah. CRT, they are the clues. You don't have to wait for the blood pressure. No, madam, blood pressure of gut and patchy or iron or stuff. Mm -hmm. There are so many early clue clues are there. Okay, okay, fine. Next. Uh, I'm CNS examination. In a radio femoral delay, most of the time in newborn. Huh? No, you don't see that. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, CNS examination. The baby was uh, alert, but uh, but uh, in one so crying incessantly, in in one so level cry. Okay, uh, now let's go back to your differential diagnosis. Susu, what is what is our differential diagnosis? Ma'am, uh, one was the ones I mentioned, and we added chronic terrace to it. And uh, which type of cry is there in chronic terrace? High pitch shrill cry. High pitch cry, but not inconsolable. Hmm. Got it. Second is, um, pyogenic meningitis. Pyogenic meningitis. Yeah. But still, the child is not going to cry continuously in hmm. what in between in between there is a spots of shrilled cry, and then hmm. the, uh, the baby is lethargic. The hmm. baby is never alert in any other diagnosis. Hmm. That is a peculiarity of tetanus, neonatal tetanus. The baby is alert. There is yes. just spasm, mm. right? Baby is hungry, and so there is an inconsolable cry. Mm. Not a cry of convulsion, mm. right? Rest of the things there is encephalopathy, pyogenic meningitis, bilirubin induced encephalopathy, or inborn error of encephalopathy. Even if it is a dehydration, there could be hypernatremia, and there is a issue, right? But in tetanus, it is classic that there is a alert baby. That means tetanus na mota bachcha hai jo hai na, so he is able to that the child is alert, right? He is not lethargic. So your first complaint of baby is lethargic was not fitting in the tetanus. Hey na, that might be because the blood baby had hypoglycemia initially. As soon as you treat the hypoglycemia, the baby is alert. Yes. Okay, so these are very simple clinical experience which I am sharing with you, yes, which will help you in picking up the neonatal tetanus. Okay, you cannot miss neonatal tetanus. It yes. is nowadays because of the vaccination. We, in fact, it has declared that there is the we have eliminated, but uh, at least in a year we see four to five neonatal tetanus from our drainage area, Daho, then all that. Similarly, Surat also must be seeing from the. The drainage area. Most of the time, it is a migratory population. Yes. So vaccination is missed, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, and spasmodic contractions uh, of back and all four limbs were uh, uh, elicited on touch and uh, light stimulus. Which uh, poisoning will have such uh, spasmodic contraction? Not in the newborn. And strychnine poisoning in uh, adults is, shows a similar picture. Yes. Uh, I mean, on motor examination, uh, tone was increased in all four limbs and back. Uh, reflexes, ma'am, all the deep tendon reflexes were exaggerated. Perfect. In knee and ankle and biceps were checked. I, think I would not take such reflexes. I would not examine a neonatal tetanus patient. Once my diagnosis is done with the spatula test, I have ruled out one, two, three, four, five, six. My differential diagnosis, mm -hmm. I will not disturb the patient. Hmm. Ma'am, because stimulus leads to spasms and uh, spasms lead to the complications of uh, tetanus. So, yes. the patient has to be kept free of pain and stimulus. Very good, very good. So, okay, we'll discuss the complications. Next. Ma'am, hmm. uh, the re reflexes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, Moro's reflex uh, was... Check member of patient, but it was incomplete man, because the patient was not able to spread his arms. I will not go in the detail of reflexes. 
again same we will not disturb this patient yes okay what happens to morose reflux in bilirubin induced encephalopathy uh when the it is man uh, exaggerated exaggerated in bilirubin like it the baby startled very easily yes And, baby can be startled very easily okay okay next uh And the, these were, ma'am, just uh, these were checked superficially and uh, not okay. checked in detail. No, ma'am. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you need to see the pupils. Okay, fine. Ma'am, <clears throat> uh, in abdomen for abdomen examination, the only positive finding was that on palpation of the abdomen, it was tense. It was getting tense easily, and then spasmodic concern of the abdominal muscles were also felt. Yes, yes. But your umbilicus was normal. Yes, ma'am. The umbilicus was normal, ma'am. It was, and even on history, ma'am, they had not given any history of up, applying any cow dung or uh, any such mud or okay such thing. So, uh, what could be the source of infection? You to see the she said that no, the bazaar thi dooro line bandhiyo to. Hmm. And she said that a fresh blade has been used. So, what yeah. could be the source of infection? Hmm. Have you read new on it and written us? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Uh, ma'am, uh, it can be the dirty hands of the, well, the hands of the delivery, yes. the person conducting the delivery. The delivery area, the five cleans. Since years we are knowing, now they have added two more. So, what hmm. are the five cleans? Uh, clean, uh, cord, clean, cut, clean, uh, tie, clean. होम Hmm. If this five and there are two more also according to WHO, so that's the homework. Yes, ma'am. They have add. They keep on adding the cleans, but I always think of five cleans are the best. That if you ensure five cleans, the things are done. Okay, so here though the clean cut cut was there, but we don't know the home environment. Being a migratory population, they live in a kacha house. Yes. Jhupar, jima niche pathre luna hai. Where is this cl clostridium tetani present right now? Soil most. Ah, uh, Kim, soil ma tan kirekha padi. Ah, uh, and then the spores are uh, dormant yes. in the. Yes, the spores are dormant in the uh, soil in the environment. As soon as they get a culture media, they start growing. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay. Fine. Good. Go ahead. Um, CVS examination was normal. There was just tachycardia, but no specific. Okay, and... then. Hmm. Then no. Then summarizing the findings. Then. Uh... Was the CVS examination was showing a gallop rhythm? Uh no, it was not. No, there was. Then I will think. Okay. Then gallop rhythm is usually then uh, seen in. Uh, Heart congenital heart disease is where heart failure. So there is only congenital heart disease which gets uh, heart failure. No, in neonates, I mean. In neonates, there is no other cause of heart failure. Hmm. Uh, and severe anemia. If. Yes, very good. Severe anemia. Yes. So could it be? Um. Yes. Then. Heart failure na causes newborn congenital heart disease. See, I can say. Um, I mean, um, newborn. I'm most likely. I have encountered only heart, I mean, congenital heart defects leading to heart failure. But apart from that, severe anemia can be a cause, but not seen. I have not seen. We are discussing bilirubin encephalopathy. Yes, ma'am. 
so that is one of the clue for you if the patient has a galop rhythm and severe anemia suggest a severe hemolysis and mm. could be a bilirubin encephalopathy yes hai na why are you focusing only on the neonatal uh, tetanus mm -hmm. when you are examining a child of a neonatal tetanus suspected you need to see this also right yes. we yes. have to first examination we have to do complete to diff all our differential diagnosis we have to rule out and then we said because the neonatal tetanus is not a diagnosis of investigation it no. is a clinical diagnosis mm. everything i am excluding one by one by and then it is a clinical but then that thing i have to do very fast Perfect. i cannot just aaj aa karau kale pelu karau for neonatal tetanus because the treatment aspect is entirely different than mm. the routine condition yes okay. next <coughs> ma'am uh, summarizing me uh, okay you uh, want to summarize you don't want to discuss your treatment part uh, ma'am uh, uh, in treatment ma'am we uh, so isolated the patient we kept the patient in a different room free uh, in a noise free devra have you attended uh, next time what you have to do no when you see i would like to a uh, mentor you for the presentation also yes, it is yes, not only the pay, uh, so when you are presenting no or when you are narrating a case yes ma'am you would have at least put one picture of this patient uh, so yes, you help me to judge the severity of the neonatal tetanus ma'am actually i have a video ma'am i actually tried putting it it was not running i can show it on the camera if you would okay. no no man i am just telling you how to make your presentation more interesting yes yes ma in neonatal tetanus ma uh when he said no it is not much to discuss it is that i want that you should know other differential diagnosis and so i am yes. gathering the information for you only he you learn all these things aspect also yes, so yes. Just that you put a picture of your patient okay. right second thing you narrate how you have managed neonatal tetanus nowadays with availability of the nicu the survival is good mm. there is only 10 to 20% mortality whereas in our days the mortality was 100% right so yes. how do you have managed this patient is still in your uh, nicu uh, no ma'am the patient did not survive ma'am so then you we will discuss why your patient did not survive is yes. it a difference why my patients are surviving and not yours that we will discuss yes. whether the severity was there which could not or whether we have not predicted the complication whether we were inadequate in the management in giving the immunoglobulins right yes. so we can discuss that part also so if yes. you put a pick off like how you have managed whether you have keep uh, the environmental was environment was dark how hmm. could create a dark environment in a nicu when so much noise is there bp is going on hai na why the other experts are there other yes. plus consultants are there we are there right but we share experience of each other that how to make see we, government and uh, all of us are trying hard to prevent yes ma'am right but when when it occurs now we are trying to treat yes okay right? so if you have you have a management how you have managed what was the complications you have faced we will discuss that part yes because uh, we have discussed the case we have discussed the clinical examination the salient points of that what are the sure. differential diagnosis now the question is i want to survive this patient hmm. so how could i survive Ma'am, ideally, ma'am, the the management of uh, tetanus is uh, mostly uh, symptomatic. Like you control the manifestation of tetanus for around one to two weeks. If you can serve yeah. the baby, can. This was a good weight baby, three kg baby. Came yeah. to it was two point three. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now ideal, you are aware, right? What you have done, what complications you have faced, if you can dis, uh, you can narrate. Yes, ma'am. We will discuss. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, when this baby we suspected when we suspected tetanus, we first uh, uh, shifted the patient from outside. Uh, there is an isolation room in our NICU, so we. Yes, I have seen. It's good. So we, so we, we shifted. We are the only hospital who have is a good uh, isolation room, so that is good. In the side, there is no the major nursery is not connected with that room. Yes, you keep your COVID patients, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good. So okay. we shifted the patient to that room. and uh, we dimmed the lighting of that room uh, so, so and the 
doors were also closed so that the sound of the surrounding ventilators uh, were uh, all reduced but uh, what, is it then who was looking after that patient how frequently the patient was monitored uh, ma'am around 30 minutes to 1 hour ma'am the first it is adjacent to the first room which is the most critical room so the resident there was just taking around there and noting the vitals every 30 minutes to 1 hour in the patient the sq2 multi para monitor was attached to the patient so yes divrat first and foremost this patient requires minimal stimulation yes so what you have to do your multi para if you keep it towards the like the main nursery a nursing station and if you just see the nurse uh, multi para you don't have to go every one hour in the room mm-hmm. yeah. okay clustering of care what do you mean by clustering of care uh i mean all the interventions that are needed have to do be done in at one go and not repeatedly especially also to prevent the septicemia we do clustering of care mm. okay. second thing that uh, dark and atmosphere you can create in whatever way you it is possible sometimes like as if dim lighting is not there you can just put a paper or that way right uh, fluids were going on right yes ma'am yes nesting must have been done so that the baby do not get startled yes okay yes, so this is a basic newborn care now your patient what was the downy score uh downy score downy score it is so and downy score is the uh, like you it is you mostly used for as a respiratory distress in a patient uh it is consists of five criteria and 10 points are awarded and uh, maximum 10 points are awarded and in uh basis of the points we assess the uh distress and if any intervention is needed for the patient so what was the Sinos- sinosis ma'am we did not actually do that i it was not done ma'am because the patient did not have any important to do a downy score of a new tetanus patient <clears throat> uh ma'am due to the spasmodic contraction of the trachea there can be sinosis and well of there can be apnea or sinosis and that can worsen the Out, outcome of the patient only apnea and sinus uh, anything else no uh, aspiration yes all right because if the patient was at home the relatives were are dud natle to kai kapo kai kapo and mm-hmm. they trying and in between there was spasm so pneumonia is a very most often what i have seen my experience i am sharing that patient most of the tetanus patient have pneumonia because of the like relatives were not aware that this is a tetanus they want to feed the child the child is not swallow not able to swallow so you have to see the downy score whether the neonatal tetanus is associated with pneumonia mm. right mm. once a neonatal tetanus who is associated with pneumonia your management changes mm. how ma'am uh... if the downy score is more than 7 then we have to elective intubate the patient yes uh, more than 6 more than 6 and for tetanus it is difficult to uh, intubate also it is yes. a long so you need to take a call ki whether you want to go for a tracheostomy yes early tracheostomy is helpful yes when we had uh, mechanically ventilated we had intubated the patient uh, early for the same reason that because we have we don't have ma'am facilities for tracheostomy the ent department here does not have the uh, instruments needed for neonatal tracheostomy so usually uh, it is avoided in our institute so we uh, intubated the patient electively uh, before the spasms increase very nice so this is yes if you find that this is a severe neonatal tetanus the spasm frequencies are more elective intubation and ventilation helps in survival minimum ventilation it's not it is not going to require more pressure if there is no pneumonia right yes. but minimal supportive ventilation definitely helps in a survival of a neonatal tetanus okay yes. so your supportive care has to be very strong hmm. supportive care what how, what is your supportive care uh ma'am uh, the all the interventions that help in maintaining the vitals of the patient and uh abc huh that much temperature breathing circulation you you know what is facility based newborn care yes yes so there is a tabc fm fm hmm tabc fluid monitoring 
and if we are giving feed then that feed, letter on feed hmm. so tbc fm so fluid and monitoring and tabc so hmm. in neonatal tetanus be careful for the respiratory if mm-hmm. there is a frequent spasm, if there is a uh, apnea, if there is a hypoxia, elective intubation and ventilation will help in <coughs> survival. Once mm-hmm. you have done an elective intubation, VAP bundle is very important. Mm-hmm. What is VAP bundle? Ma'am, VAP bundle constitutes of uh, all the uh, care mm-hmm. that is taken mm-hmm. to prevent uh, ventric, uh, ventilator associated pneumonia. Kaya kaya. What is that? Ma'am, it is uh, like use your uh, head head end elevation to prevent uh, aspiration and frequent uh, suctioning of the oropharyngeal secretion and ET secretion. Frequent suctioning is not possible frequent, in your tetanus. Uh, is a yes. stimulus? Mm, yes, no, no. Yes or no? Yes, so ma'am. what is the wrap bundle? Mm. Ma'am, by changing of the circuits. Why to change the circuit when the patient is on ventilator? Ma'am, that can be the source of, well, uh, it, it can harbor bacteria. Well, if you change the circuit, how frequently you change the circuit? Uh, ma'am, no, we don't, we don't know, but in web bundle theories, they have given it that you should. They, they ask for change of circuit, how frequently? Months, uh, in some articles, it was written three to seven days, one circuit should be. So this baby was with you how many days? Uh, ma'am, for, for just for four days. After intubation, oh. four days. So there is no need of change of circuit. Yes, yes. Right? In this baby, how will you, will you prepare, uh, prevent, a, what, how will you implement a VAP bundle? Mm. Mm. I'm using gloves for while handling. Uh, yes. See, in this baby, frequent suctioning will not be helpful to us. Yes. Mm. Right? This is neonatal tetanus. It's not a normal baby. Yes. Uh, in frequent re- dislodging of ET tube will also harmful to this patient. Mm. So secure your ET tube properly. Mm. Second, sedate pro- uh, properly and then intubate. First is that. Mm-hmm. RSA class because this uh, there is a spasm you keep on uh, uh, struggling with the intubation introducing infection as this trauma mm-hmm. the personally working with this baby should be having strict aseptic proportions gown uh, gloves right? mm-hmm. yes yes and in this patient again the IV line spasm also IV out stages mm-hmm. to secure a proper IV yes sir that we that was done. We had inserted a long uh, wagon. I am uh, just talk, I am just uh, discussing with you how we can prevent VAP in this patient. Yes, ma'am. VAP bundle is also there, but we have to do selectively for the neonatal tetanus. We cannot apply mm-hmm. everything. Yes, ma'am. Okay? So for this patient, these are the few things which we need to ensure. Okay. Yes. Pneumonia is one of the complication, very frequently encountered complication on admission or during admission in case of a. Neonatal tetanus. Mm-hmm. Neonatal, it, the mortality is not because of neonatal tetanus most of the time. It is because of bad pneumonia. Yes. Okay. So one is new, pneumonia. What else complication do you see during the uh, neonatal tetanus admission? Uh, ma'am, due to the sp- uh, spasmodic contraction of the trachea and uh, tracheal stenosis can happen and there can be uh, asphyxia, hypoxia. Yes. And... Uh, other acidosis, other complications of asphyxia, there can be cyanosis. Okay, fine. Then uh, it will ensure by elective intubation and proper ventilation and oxygenation. Yes. Then? Uh, ma'am, apart from that, there can be uh, neurological, uh, sorry, uh, and there can be uh, lysis of the muscles because of frequent uh, contractions and spasms. There can be myoglobinuria can happen, which can lead to AKI. Exactly. It is lysis, but a delayed AKI is one of the frequent complications of neonatal tetanus because of the spasm as well as there is a persistent hypoxia. Right? Hypoxia is there. So there are chances of uh, tubular damage and there can be AKI. So we need to ensure hydration. We need to monitor the renal function. Right? Uh, similarly, like when see, if we see in birth asphyxia also, 
the AKI set every day five or day six. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, then. Um, and anyone? I think you have a two colleagues with you. Yes, ma'am. Only Shahid. Shahid is there. Yeah, Shahid is not there. Ah, okay. Shahid is not there. So I think the organizer and the Devrat. <laughs> okay, then you only have to answer. Mm. Sometimes with a severe spasm, there are chances of intraventricular hemorrhage. Mm. Okay, so these are the things because of this, the mor mortality, morbidity increases in the neonatal tetanus. Now I want to prevent all these things. Mm. Sometimes, most of the time, see when the patient comes and it succumbs in 24 to 48 hours, it is because of the neonatal toxin. Mm. Toxins itself. Mm. Where we tried to control the spasm and <clears throat> able to do it and thus uh, the clostridium load is too high. So if the mortality is within 24 to 48 hours, it is because of the disease. But when the patient is still with you, then it is because of the other complications. Right now, as soon as the neonatal tetanus comes and the baby is not having aspiration pneumonia, nothing, and it was a good weight baby, how I will prevent this? Remember, I pro adequate sedation and muscle relaxation should be. Yes. What do you give for sedation? Um, and, um, for sedation, I mean, adults diazepam is uh, given, but in newborn, the pediatrician. Yes, ma'am. Very close group. Let it be in Gujarati. So you can, I am not talking about at all uh, the adult and pediatric. Let us concentrate on neonatal yeah, tetanus. Yes. In a sedation, what do you use? Both important component management now. One was that secure the airway. I told you. Mm -hmm. Right. Second thing is keep fever control. Karo mm -hmm. Don't control the fever. The metabolism is too high, and there will be electrolyte and hyper disturbances and hypoglycemia. So that also you need to temperature, airway, breathing, circulation. Hmm? Yes. So neonatal tetanus patient, sometimes you need to give round the clock PCM. Ah. If there is a high grade fever. Yes. Okay. It is an autonomic disturbance. So sometimes it is difficult to control that fever also. Hmm. Yes. Second is that. Sedation. Yes. Uh, sedation. Can be given using benzodiazepam. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? What is the book mentioning? Uh, Achha, you are not comfortable with diazepam. Uh, ma'am, diazepam. Uh, ma'am, diazepam, sir, ma'am, the. Uh, Nee, diazepam, the book is mentioning diazepam na? in neonatal tetanus also. In like Mehrban Singh mentions di diazepam. So, and with with other uh, relaxant also like methabarbamol and paraldehyde. Paraldehyde, I haven't used. I even I haven't used. In three years of my career, I haven't used paraldehyde. Yeah, it is written. But what is practical? One is only midazepam. Uh, anyway, after that, we had started the patient on uh, Rubinox also, like the metabar. Day one, you are supposed to start on Rubinex. We want to relax the muscle. Hmm. So, Rubinex is what? Hmm. It Rubinex. is a muscle relaxing, metabar. Dose of Rubinex? Uh, 75 to 100 mg per kg. And our patient is a uh, so when as soon as the baby comes, we give we start Robin X. But sedation, Robin X is a muscle relaxation. Muscle relaxation. Sedation kya denge? Sedation ke liye mamsir midazi diya tha mamis ko. Acha. So midaz se uske spasm control nahi hoye to. Mam later we had um, matlab diazepam. We had ordered from the casualty and started because later on we had started on diazepam. Medazolam continuous infusion with diazepam was uh, two hours, three hours, like six doses of diazepam after two to three hours. Next time, you two mg per kg diazepam was given. 
Devrat, next time you don't add two oh, same group of two drugs. Midas and Dizepam are same group of drugs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then, so next time what you will do? Which group of drug you can use? Uh, Ma'am, chlorpromazine was also mentioned in the book. Yeah, so I haven't used. No, ma'am, we didn't do. Largectil is an excellent, excellent sedative. See, here the game is to sedate the patient for two weeks, control the spasm, minimal vent uh, ventilatory support, and as soon as the patient is stable, start the feed, and just two weeks. Support the patient two weeks and the patient is out. Yes, ma'am. So first, so 42, 78 hours, means first at the entry, if you are not able to control the spasm, the complications will set in. Yes. So next time you see, oh, not only midas. Mm. Rizipam does wonders. You can definitely, because see, you have ventilated the child. So yes. it's no risk of respiratory depression. Mm. Rizipam pe respiratory depression hai na? Yes. So there is no risk now. You have already ventilated the child. Mm. So, if you are giving midas or dizepam, the other group is phenobarbitone. Why? Uh, and the mechanism action of both drugs, it acts on the different receptors. In It is drugs. another group. As well as if you give a phenobarb through IG, the long half-life. Mm. So that will help in controlling the Spasm. Largectil mm. also is a better drug. Largectil okay. injectable as well as oral, both available. And in the tetanus patient, you can definitely give drugs through in, intragastric, through IG tube. Okay. After adult tetanus, pediatric tetanus, IG tube, and dizipam. So you definitely, because it is a long half life, phenobab has a long half life. Yes, ma'am. Injectable phenobab, the mechanism starts in 20 minutes hmm. and wait for two hours. Whereas with the oral phenobarbiton, it starts with two to three hours, but late disappearance from the body. Hmm. Eight lakhbuk, six to 12 hours, the half-life chain. Right? A long duration. So we give dosing of phenobab is either OD or BD, right? Yes. I am. So that drug you can use. You can use Largectil. You can use phenytoin. Okay. So this was the sedation part mm. for neonatal tetanus. Pediatric tetanus, it is all to, uh, together a different game. We need to discuss that later on sometime. Okay, yes. fine. So one is sedation. Then TABC, sedation, then? Um, and then we, we, have, we have to tackle the soup. Uh, first, the whatever toxin is remaining in the body, we have to give tetanus. Yes. Perfect. Kayo. So, na, so happy se ne. Ma'am, we had given uh, immunoglobin, tetanus immunoglobin. Dose? 250 international units per cage. Ma'am, we had given uh, 750 we had given uh, to this patient. Yes, there I want to add my experience. Books mentioned 250 uh, in each buttox or sorry, not the but enterolateral aspect of thigh. Yes. Right? And then we just sit. But if the toxin is more, you need more immunoglobin. Mm. last patient I treated and I discharged we gave 3000 okay because the toxins I have to neutralize I reviewed mm. the literature then only I have done not uh, just on my whims okay the literature review textbook mentioned only 500 but if you go to a different cases and literature review they mention till the spasms are there give tetanus toxin oh. uh, immunoglobin sorry Mm -hmm. TIG. Yes. Which is in your uh, set? Ma'am, we give TTIG, tetanus in the Human ke bovine. Human, human. Very yeah. good, very good. Bovine hoi to, dose double thai jai. Dose now, yes. 1500 international unit thai jai. Hai So there, uh, what I want to share this thing. Whenever they, when they said no, that new unital tetanus no case jai, to make it okay, let me share my experience. Last discharge. We it was with us for 62 days. Baby was with us for 62 days. And because of, it was so severe neonatal tetanus that I had to give 3000 international unit. So you can definitely judge the spasm and uh, give the pellet mm -hmm. 250 But if the spasm's frequency and severity persist, you have to neutralize the toxin. Okay. 
मैम जस्ट अ क्वेश्चन मैम व्हाट शुड बी द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ रिपीटिंग द डोज मतलब हाउ फ्रीक्वेंट नहीं डेली इन द डेली इन द राउंड मॉर्निंग वी यूज्ड टू जज ओके कि हाउ व्हाट इज द फ्रीक्वेंसी किटली वायरस स्पाज्म आया व्हाट इज द स्टेटस ऑफ पेशेंट हाउ मेनी टाइम्स पेशेंट वेंट इनटू ब्रेडिकार्डिया हाइपोक्सिया व्हाट इज द हाइपरटेंशन एंड देन यू कैन टेक अ डिसीजन फॉर इनफैक्ट आई शुड राइट दैट सो दैट अदर पीपल शुड नो अबाउट दिस थिंग है ना अदरवाइज बुक विल नॉट मेंशन दैट यस I find out the reference from where we uh, got that we can increase the dose of the uh, the PIG. I'll definitely find out and let you know. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so this is one of the major thing for neonatal tetanus. Second is uh, the see we talk about TABC, we talk about sedation, we talk about uh, TIG, which is very important. <coughs> we have to give tetanus vaccine before the well. patient. Yeah. But fourth important thing, ma'am, antibiotics. Yes, which antibiotic? This is infection. Yes, ma'am. The books mention. Uh, what are you? Ma'am, we had given ma'am ceftriaxone, uh, gentamicin, and uh, penicillin, ma'am. Penicillin and metronidazole. So there was no need of ceftriaxone. Why this cocktail? No, no. Initially, ma'am, actually, penicillin was not available, so we had started with ceftriaxone. Then we omitted ceftriaxone. Continued. Uh, penicillin was. Uh, no, no, no. You don't need only ceftriaxone. Okay. You don't need. Okay. Uh, why I say that ceftriaxone you don't need? You preserve that drug. Hmm. Huh? For pyogenic meningitis and other infection. You know what is the antibiotic stewardship? Mm, yes, ma'am. I mean, uh, it is the like antibiotic should be used with caution and uh, as much as uh, there should not be uh, unnecessary use of antibiotics to prevent antibiotic resistance. Yes. So this is one sentence, but this will be a full question. So how will you do? Mari pasa ausa taro paper tom full question mukis. So you do have anything more about antibiotics stewardship? to share with me ma'am each uh, hospital should have uh, their own guidelines and policies of usage of antibiotics and neonatal tetanus ni guidelines such ma'am penicillin g has been uh, yes. so there was no penicillin available then what the book mentioned what the protocol mentioned protocols ka vapro to aims protocol which cpg guidelines which protocols you use मैम एम्स प्रोटोकॉल इज यूज्ड मोस्टली एंड सेम के पेनिसिलिन ना होए तो सेफ्ट्राक्सिन अपन अह नहीं देवर आई विल गेट गो थ्रू इट आई आई डोंट रिमेंबर यू डोंट रिमेंबर ओके यू हैव रीड यू हैव रीड द न्यूनेटल टेटनस नो यस नाउ आई हैव व्हाट आई ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस मैम ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस इज पेनिसिलिन इन न्यूनेटल ओनली पेनिसिलिन and it has to be combined with the penicillin na mare to um and it has to be uh, combined with gentamicin has been given in gentamicin and yes gentamicin mean mehrban singh ma'am i have read in mehrban singh okay it is given there okay so clostridium tetanus which group of uh, bacteria and gram positive anaerobic बैक्टीरिया there is it is done in our department only and there are a lot of literature available that either a single penicillin or single metronidazole also work for neonatal tetanus any tetanus anadi man faydo so to ase devrat why i am telling you all these things so that next time patient ne na na patient ne so faydo to ase uh ma'am a minimal antibiotics you usage in patients will have all uh, the undue has adverse effects of antibiotics will be prevented kitli adverse effect tane khabar padi antibiotic ne not many to so so bachcha ne so faydo to se newborn tetanus wala bachcha ne char char injection ne badli ek injection maarto the stimulus will be reduced 
if less is given quality management yes yes hmm ane apne metro ni diesel kevi rite apie ma ma metro ni diesel is given through infusion ma infusion yes infusion pump vapri le to yes to stimulus ram to ahi ana hat pas se jatto ch nahi hmm excellent or not yes hai na okay so yes. penicillin and met and or metrozil any drug can work but most of the time my experience is that when i receive a neonatal tetanus they are having septicemia it is not a solely tetanus mm -hmm. in that case i need some one more drug also mm -hmm. to uh, to take care of gram negative mm -hmm. for that gentamicin gentamicin or your peptacillin uh, tetrazobactam or your uh, cefotexin two drug can work okay. okay depends on your flora of your nursery that also mm. you have to see though mm. this is a community infection you have to take care of flora of your nursery right so this is very important thing for or uh, four things in your tetanus tabc mm. right sedation with the right dose mm. don't worry about ke over sedate thai nahi thai over sedate jahan sudhi spasm che tyan sudhi bachcho over sedate nahi thai बच्चों sedation par hoy to pan hmm and then it is a very good thing for me to give the drugs through ig hmm hmm it means people injection no stimulus changing of iv and iv is everything has gone yes yes and the pooling of secretions that you have to take care hmm. so when you do a, when there is there will be lot of pooling of secretion in first 72 hours hmm so when you do a delis no you be very careful don't touch the mucosa बॉडी Yes. Prevention of complication. Yes. Right. So this was what I wanted to share for neonatal tetanus, and mm -hmm. uh, with the side talk, we could take certain other differential diagnoses also, as well as antibiotic stewardship. Yes, you must go through that uh, wherever available, uh, and in fact, you must do a what is QI? You know. QI. Ah. Uh... no i haven't heard quality improvement initiative okay quality improvement initiative itle devrat there are see the system is working right and still there are certain gaps in the system right labor uma chutu and you know that the, as soon as the baby is delivered the baby has to kept on mother's abdomen hmm what tha to surat civil mein mam very less koi koi na na koi major it is not you i came to your institute as a mentor but even in my institute mm -hmm. right i am not able to 30% 40% 50% thai che day time ma thai rate badu band thai in spite of knowing that this is a point of care mm -hmm. similarly kangaroo mother care group mm -hmm. che video che everything is there but there also i can can you deliver are you able to deliver 6 2 8 9 10 hours of kangaroo mother care Man, very less time. Only if the parents are very educated and very compliant, which is very rare. rare in it is not rare. We have not counselled. We have not counselled. Right. So it sometimes you have counselled, but you thought that mother ne privacy is not here. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you have counselled, but your nursing staff are not motivating. 
So hmm. there are different, different, there is either difference in, there is no policy in the NICU to give a kangaroo mother care. There is no policy in the hospital ke baby ne tame janme u breast abdomen par muko. There is no policy of antibiotic, rational antibiotic. So one is policy. So first we need to form a policy or a protocol. Then you see whether the people around the working with this policy are a, enough educated, enough skilled for that. Right? Once the people are skilled, they are knowledgeable, they will deliver. So one is policy. Second is people. The place. Who care, 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 who came to Surat Sivil Mad. But Surat Sivil Mad delivery load to Jew. Surat Sivil Mad Tamit Gain. I'm Jeritna tables, she labor room. Ek Satan. So workplace, you need to some make some changes. Right? Yes. So that is very important. Then the availability of personnel is also very important. People mm. ma just delivery handle karya pachi. Whether you are allowing Asha or some family member to hold the baby on mother's abdomen. Mm. So person, so place, people, person, policy. Beneficiary is knowledge, beneficiary is education. Mother ne antenatally counseling karyu to kene. So there is it is known as either a five eye therapy. 5Y root cause analysis or it is known as a fishbone analysis. Mm -hmm. In anything you can fix up, Devrat. It is not only, it is Baroda Medical College, same. Everywhere, government medical college is overloaded. But then, if you are committed to fix up, it is known as quality improvement initiative. So this was one of the side and there comes this antibiotic stewardship, rational antibiotic. Mm -hmm. So this two side talk I have done, yes. which I'm really passionate about it and Kangaru Mother Care. I am working for Kangaru Mother Care since last 25 years. When I was resident, it was started in our uh, BJ Medical College. So yes, it has an amazing, uh, we have seen that when if the early enteral feed, that means if you uh, feeding is started early and it's mother's own milk and we give Kangaru Mother Care from day one, ROP has, uh, uh, has uh, we can prevent. Mm. So that is major thing, right? We can prevent sepsis. We can have an early discharge, early uh, uh, shift from NICU to the step down nursery. So these are the things. Along with that, protocol wise, uh, the, in the neonatal tetanus, I set a protocol: TABC, FM, sedation, antibiotic, and immunoglobulin. Yes. If we take this take care. We can survive the neonatal tetanus. The latest 2022 data says because of the intensive care availability and early referral, the mortality of neonatal tetanus has decreased to 10 to 20 percent, which was 100 percent just few years ago. Mm. Okay, with increasing NICU care staff, we can save these patients. So now, what you will do? You will go back. Yes. Make a flow chart. Susu shikyo. Mm. Tare a patient ma miss thayo. Yes. That's known as writing a um, okay, right? your own audit. Mm. Mortality audit. Yes, ma'am. That will be the best learning uh, take home you can take. And then you will be confident that next time tetanus aave, next time tetanus abu jina joye. Yes. First of all, prevention. But because of this migratory pop, we are also having the same migratory population. Mm. Those who are not getting regular primary health care. These uh, people are uh, having a problem. The neonatal tetanus is because of that only, not because of the regular uh, PACCHC beneficiaries. So uh, we are having, we can save the further. If next time we come across such case, we can save them. Yes. Okay. The most important thing when you discharge a neonatal tetanus, high risk follow up is must. Not only for the vaccination. For developmental assessment. Mm. Most of the neonatal tetanus will not have any developmental sequelae. Mm. You have uh, managed problem. But because of pneumonia, because of uh, AKI, because of severe hypoxia, persistent hypoxia, persistent apnea, if the brain damage is there, then there are chances of developmental sequelae. Yes. That requires an early developmental supportive care. Mm. Right? So, it is discharge, you can go to the department and cake. 
અને બધાને ભેગા કરીએ તો પછી એનું ફોલોઅપ ઇઝ વેરી ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ બીકોઝ વી આર કમિટેડ ફોર મતલબ ઇન્ટેક સર્વાઈવલ એક્ઝેક્ટલી વી આર કમિટેડ ફોર ઇન્ટેક સર્વાઈવલ મારે એવું નથી જોઈતું કે આફ્ટર ટેન યર્સ આ જેટલા બધા પ્રીટમ બચ્યા એન્ડ દેર વિલ બી અ સેપરેટ સ્કૂલ ઓફ અ ડિફરન્ટલી એબલ ચિલ્ડ્રન હે ને દેવરથ યુ મસ્ટ બી સીઈંગ કે સીપી નું પેશન્ટ જોઈએ છે પીડિયાટ્રિક ની એક્ઝામ માં અરે આપણે પેલું ન્યુ એનઆઈસીયુ ડિસ્ચાર્જ ને બોલાઈ લો યસ ઓર નો યસ વી વોન્ટ ધેટ હમણાં તારી પાસે 15 હશે નેક્સ્ટ ઇયર તારી પાસે બીજા 15 હશે સો ધીસ પોપ્યુલેશન ઇઝ ઇન્ક્રીઝિંગ બીકોઝ વી આર મોર એન્ડ મોર સેવિંગ પ્રીટર્મ એન્ડ લો બર્થ રેટ એન્ડ વી આર નોટ એબલ ટુ એન્શ્યોર ધ ઇન્ટેક્ટ સર્કલ સમટાઈમ્સ એવરીથિંગ ઇઝ વેરી ફાઈન એક્સલન્ટ પેશન્ટ ઇઝ ગ્રોઈંગ વેરી ફાઈન but then at some point the parents comes to us or parents may not come but they may go to other pediatrician and the patient is having a learning disability patient is attention deficit hyperactivity hypoglycemic insult is a severe insult patient will have myoclonic seizure mm. a single of uh, uh, I, we came to come across one of the very rap, very well to do family very well to do family treated in an icu a single hypoglycemia insult such a well grown child was marked persistent myoclonic seizure well to do means in it to carefully but then there was no it is it is not reversible mm. no this take home message is very important prevention of hypothermia prevention of hypoglycemia proper resuscitation timely supportive care timely supportive care and definitive care immunoglobulin as well as uh, antibiotics antibiotic along with quality improvement will definitely make a paradigm shift in the management of nicu patients yeah. so this what this was i this what i wanted to convey and being a neonatal tetanus we cannot stretch it for two hours yes ma'am right so we can ask the organizers that uh, enough we have discussed on your neonatal tetanus as well as some other part also thank you so much ma'am ha prashant sir ne kaise yeah so thank you so much it was really a wonderful discussion thank I you mean, prashant if you are really attending <laughs> no i was really at, uh, thank attending you so much thing. thank you only one thing which seven. i learned in my ug days and wanted to share in between but then, then i uh, think i'll uh, discuss at uh, last huh? that is 110 and 100 rule which usually we used to teach to the yes. students yes, a yes. diazepam largectil and robinex if you follow the rules and then i mean see managing tetanus devrat is actually a maths you have to just stop the spasms and once you stop the spasms as uh, shwetal ma'am said there will not be any complications so that is really 72 hours is a war to do So really, yeah. thank you so much for uh, such a nice discussion. Even the QI issues, the antibiotic stewardship, and everything, the other things which were discussed were good. So uh, we are really thankful that uh, uh, there was a nice discussion. On behalf of Academy of Pediatrics Gujarat, uh, we thank uh, everybody, and we do have Dr. Yogesh Parikh sir with us. I just want him to conclude the session. Thank yes. you. Yogesh, we got. You can have some remarks. If I'm missing some point, you can add. Because my character, whether in unit or tetanus, I have joy as. No, 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 <laughs> not too much. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Prashant and Dr. Rakesh Bai uh, for the uh, this Iguru Guru program giving the opportunity to us. And thank you, Dr. Swetal Madam. Uh, you have uh, very well managed the show single-handedly in the absence of Dr. Bajal Palde Prajapati sir, uh, sir. have not joined due to some technical issues uh, internet problem is there and congratulations dr devrath bide thank you for sir. your presentation and your mentor dr upendra uh, we uh, should conduct next program in the next saturday so let us join again on the uh, next saturday at the 6 pm hello 4 to 6 will be a better option mara resident join kari shakse because six yeah again. yeah yeah but it is a uh, feedback from uh, dr baldev prajapati sir so many persons 
contacted and uh, yeah, we yeah, but show uh, means in this there were at least we had 30 40 plus uh, rest. today there are only me and devrat no so, no no it is it is on the platform is different so we are seeing on the only the faculty panelist only okay okay yeah so so many persons are join on the youtube so okay, then uh, we cannot have an interactive with them yeah 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 but okay. uh, next time uh, devrat uh, you should join with your colleagues yes uh, ha so at least two three colleagues should be along with you or inside means next to the your uh, door so they can help you and you can discuss and we can uh, learn from that uh, inter uh, discussion yes so thank you very much dr snehal madam uh, uh, swetal ben nehal madam is also on the line and dr upendra dr prashant and everyone thank you all and you. all the plat- uh, this clarinet uh, platform uh, colleagues Uh, thank you very much for your kind support thank you so much sir thank you thank for giving the opportunity thank, thank you thank, thank you sir thank, thank, so thank you so much i was traveling so not able to attend but uh, you managed whole show and for that thank you so much no no it's my pleasure any time i always like to teach and learn from uh, each other thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you so for us we can end the meeting thank you so much